I know this is like a little dark because I didn't want to put that light on because it glares so much. But, um, and I gotta tell you, my YouTube studio is freaking me out. I could have sworn Karen Bangle said in a comment, tell the chicken story. Because she said she's been taking care of some chickens. Hang on a minute. Let me see if I can find this comment. I don't know. Everything just seems to disappear. <laughs> I had a nice day today. So, you know, when I said if I have something to talk about, I'm going to share it. So, um, today was Finn's, my grandson Finn's first day of kindergarten. Big deal, you know. He, It's a big deal, you know. He, uh, He's five years old and uh, smart as a whip. And he did preschool last year, you know, only 9 to 12, but uh, now it's like 9 to uh, 340, something like that. Big day, big day for five-year-old, and uh, he's okay about it. Let's see if he adjusts to it. I hope so. Um, he was a little upset about a couple things, I guess, that happened today, and... Um, and then the kids wanted to have, like, a little party and cook out when Finn came home. So they picked me up, and I went over there, and then they went to pick him up from school. And uh, I, I stayed home and uh, at their place and did some dishes and, you know, just stuff. Uh, cleaned the grill off, got it ready, and blew up some balloons, did things like that so that uh, the party would be ready. And... Uh, and it was fun, you know, burgers and dogs, chips and Coke, all my favorites. I just love a party, and um, I love a cookout. Oh, I love a burger on a grill. I don't care if I can't taste it. I just love a burger on a grill. Don't ask me why. So, um, probably memories, you know. And uh, so we uh, blew up the uh, splash and slide and turned that on and Finn was just thrilled to death. He was sliding down it. And of course he wants everybody to come into the little pool area of the splash and slide and um I I didn't bring a bathing suit. I, I didn't even know that part was go I should have thought, you know, I should always bring my bathing suit bag is sitting right there. It's my beach bag and my hat. I should bring it and I didn't. And uh yeah, so that was fun and we were sitting around the living room, and then Finn wanted us all to come in his bedroom, which is packed full of toys, but we went in there anyway. I had to sit on the meatball, you know, <laughs> those big gigantic uh, beanbag chair, huge, and uh, very hard to get up back out of for me. You know, I've got to, like, roll myself over, which must be a sight, and then try to get my knees into the meatball so I can try to hoist myself up. It's a little low to the ground, which, you know, the folding mat that I'm getting to sleep on there is going to be on the ground. So, yeah. The kids were like, why don't we get you a twin bed? And I'm like, no, I want to be able to fold it up, get it out of the way so Finn can have his room in the daytime. So, um, so this evening we're sitting around the couch, right, and I'm thinking about, oh, and then we go to his room with the meatball and all that, and we all end up back in this living room, and uh, we, we watched, um, oh, what's that cute little kids program with Valerie Bertinelli, um, you know, the kids baking challenge, young kids baking, it's quite cute, you know, and uh, so I said to Finn, well, you'll be going to bed soon. I is going to go home. And he said, I want you to stay at this home. Why do you have to go, Aya? And I said, well, I was going to go home and get ready to go in my bed. I said, pretty soon I'm going to be here all the time. And then you'll be sick of me and say, Aya, can you go back to your home? <laughs> and he said, no, no, I want you here. I want you to stay here. So I said, how about if I stay till your bedtime? So I stayed. And then Michael brought me home. And I just thought that was just adorable because he is just adorable. And then I was um, trying to clean up, you know, comments, make sure I answered everybody or liked it or whatever. And I'm quite certain 
a message was up from Karen Bangle that said, tell the chicken story, because she was telling a story about how she's taking care of her neighbor's chickens, which was like, oh, we had, or it was like one chicken? I, I don't know, we had chickens. So years ago, I lived in a town called Whitefield, New Hampshire, uh, up in the White Mountains. Was it the White Mountains? Yes, indeed, it was the White Mountains. Dear me, I've lived some places, haven't I? Little little crappy town, really poor. Probably not anymore, you know, with the prices of everything, you know, gone up. It kind of like, I don't know, kind of like made even poor towns rich. I don't know. But um, back then it was, uh, you know, it was hit hard from the 70s. Uh, lost all the manufacturing and, you know. So it was a town that had kind of died. Um, but Dunkin' Donuts came in and saved the day. No, not really, but Dunkin' Donuts did come in, and there was a Jiffy Mart. I worked there for a while, and uh, my husband had an antique business right in our home, uh, in the garage. And uh, so a neighbor came over. Her brother-in-law was helping work on our house because we always bought old defunct houses for really cheap. That's how we did it. It was a house for $30,000 and we um, uh, put a lot of money into it. And so this you know, guy came to the door. He said, hey, I, I saw you bought this and uh, you need a lot of help here. And, you know, would, would you like us to, you know, give you some estimates? And sure. And they ended up working there and then they ended up not working there. But while they were there, um, sister-in-law came over and she was telling me all about 4-H and they had a 4-H group and I'm like, you know what, I might be interested in that and she was doing uh, turkeys, turkeys and uh, and you know, she didn't have any more of a backyard than I had uh, you know, the I don't know how much land maybe a third of an acre including the house and the two-story garage and a big parking lot off the side and I said, hey, you know, there's room back here for a chicken coop. What, are we, what if we do chickens and, you know, we do 4-H? Because I homeschooled my kids, and I was always interested in something with uh, learning, you know, whatever. So um, I researched everything and found out that the local feed store uh, would be getting chickens, baby chickens and uh, chicks in um, April. So I ordered a barred rock. That was our rooster. And what were the white ones called? Oh, darn it all. My goodness, that was so long ago. Bonnie was only like two years. Not even two. No, she was a baby when we moved in there. Nine months old. And I think the next year I did it. So she was a little over a year at the time. What was the name of those other chickens? We had Bard Rock, Bard Rock and... Oh, heck, I can't remember, but they were very white, the hens, and um, layers, you know. I wanted eggs, and I wanted fertilized eggs, and that's why we had the rooster. So when we, we got the baby chicks, but the rooster hadn't come in. So the baby chick and, and a duck. I wanted a duck. Got a duck. That was a mistake. That's another story. <clears throat> It'll probably be in this story, but let's start with the beginning of the chicken story. Right. So, um, you know, almost all of our chickens got blue ribbons. And for every ribbon you got, you got a particular uh, amount of money for each of your ribbons. The kids made out like bandits during that um, fair where we brought the chickens to show. And... Uh, People were treating the chickens so poorly, but let me get back to the beginning. So they're little baby chicks, and, you know, I had to read up and figure out how you take care of these little guys. So I got these big, I think I used big Tupperware bins, and we had lamps, and, you know, put whatever I had to put down at the bottom of the container, made sure we were keeping those chicks nice and warm, they were in the basement. It was spring. A spring's still pretty cold, but we made sure the chicks were warm. And, and you have to take your little chick when they're a baby, and you have to dip their little beak in water and then dip it into the seed. And you have to do each and every one of your chicks that way. And I think we had 
10 hens, the rooster, and one duck. Because I figured, you know, we needed X amount of eggs a day, so I bought the amount of chickens that I felt would lay at least one egg a day. And, you know, they were excellent layers, and their eggs were amazing once they grew up. But meanwhile, they were little, little tiny baby chicks. And so that's how we started them, you know. And, you know, it's a funny thing. Once you dip their beak in the water and in the, in the, in the feed, they got the hang of it, and they went to town, right? So, like, two weeks later, the rooster came, and the chickens were starting to grow. So they were... They were becoming pullets, is that what you call them? And, and the little rooster, he was so cute. He looked just like a chickadee. He was a little black with yellow, and um, he would later change to just black and white. But he, he looked just like a little chickadee, you know, that you see flying around. And, um, <laughs> and uh, oh, Rachel and I just fell head over heels with this cute little rooster. It looked like a little bird. And, uh, you know, what should we call him? What should we call him? I said, oh, I think he looks like a Gunther. And she said, oh, Mr. Gunther. Let's call him Mr. Gunther. But Michael took control of the situation and called him Jimbo after some baseball player. I think it was baseball anyway, because he loved baseball. Jimbo. And Jimbo stuck. And Rachel still called it Mr. Gunther. But anyway, um boy, did that rooster get mean. <laughs> you couldn't get near him. Michael was the only one who could actually approach him and, and it wouldn't attack him. And he was the one who would have to go get the eggs once they grew up and started laying. And the chicken, the rooster thought the duck was a hen. Uh -uh -uh. So that was a little odd. And, uh, <clears throat> and the duck laid eggs. Yeah. The duck laid eggs, and I was really weirded out. I didn't want duck eggs. It was like, mm. so I would save them and give them to this woman's husband. Remember the brother-in-law who came to fix the house, and then the sister-in-law. We became good friends, her and I. And her husband eventually came over and started working on the house, and he did a really nice job, too. Bless his heart. Wherever he is, I... I uh, Hope they're doing well. I lost contact with them too, but yeah. So, um, so the chickens, yeah, the chickens grew up and, um, and we sold the eggs. Uh, they laid so well that we could sell some of them and we kept some and, um, and I mean, people raved about our eggs. They were that good and we won, um, a lot of blue ribbons uh, at the fair, not just for the chickens and uh, the rooster, but also uh, the kids grew some um, vegetables and flowers and won first prize on all of them. They did really, really well. And just a little tiny side guard on the on one hilly side of the house, you know. And uh, that was a really cool experience, you know. Uh, I fed my chickens really well. I started looking at the ingredients in the feed, and I, once they grew up, I said, uh, you know what? I read a lot, and uh, a lot of older farmers uh, fed their chickens cracked corn. So I go up to the feed and see that was right up the hill from me, and I went and I talked to him about it, and he had cracked corn, and it was cheap. So I'd buy the cracked corn, and I'd give them that, and I'd also let them peck on lime, you know, ground limestone, because uh, I, I read, you know, I read everything. I read old books. I read newer books. I read online. I just read. I like to read. And uh, the other thing I did for them is whenever the romaine was on sale for 99 a head, I'd swoop up three of them and I'd throw them down to the chickens because we had a big balcony. Chickens were down below and they just kind of roamed freely. Though eventually we couldn't do that because a dog got to a couple of them and uh, we lost one chicken. Heartbreaking, but um, we lost the duck too. But let me get back to the... So, yeah, we um, I, I would feed them greens, you know. I'd make sure they got greens every week. They had to have green and the cracked corn. And uh, 
winter set in and um, we had a little chicken coop, but damn, I should have heated it. You know, it was way too cold. The duck got a respiratory infection and uh, they brought it into the house. They let it swim around in a little pool in the kitchen and, and they didn't let it dry out overnight. They should have left it in the house. Well, they tried it off and put it back out in the in the coop and I, I think she froze to death. Yeah. And uh, that was a big mistake, guys. But and and then nobody wanted to tell Bonnie because it was Bonnie's duck. So Dennis didn't even bury it. He took it and he threw it on the other side of the tracks. I said, "What is wrong with you?" I said, "We should have buried it. That's so disrespectful." Oh, Dennis, I don't think I've told Bonnie that part. Anyway, I hope she never watches this. And um. I should erase it. I shouldn't. Oh, never mind. So, yeah, that happened. We told Bonnie that um, a nice man duck came along and she flew away with him and went south. I hate lying, especially the little people. So, um, Yeah, so that's the story of the chickens, the rooster, and the duck. And we lost one hen. And then we were leaving um, Whitefield, New Hampshire. And I'm, I'm really glad we did, quite frankly. Um, we closed up shop and packed everything up. We sold the house and um, gave the chickens away. I, I didn't sell them. I knew of a farmer. He had a big farm and he was in Rumford. And, um, I just said, take good care of my chickens, please. I said, you know, they, they, they're more like pets than they are. You know, I knew to him it was just a chicken, um, which is unfortunate, but to us, they were, you know, they were part of the family. They really were. You just really get attached to them and take such good care of them and everything, you know, except for, you know, the duck. If I had been home and not at work, I would have said, no, you're not putting the duck back out there. Are you nuts? you got to let it dry off and warm up overnight. Dang. Ah, uh, well, I was working, you know. I, I worked all the time back then. So that's the story of my chickens. And uh, we did go back and see them a year later, and... Uh, Jimbo still remembered Michael, and even though he was really, you know, honorary and feisty, once Michael talked to him and took a hold of him, he settled right down. And uh, I don't know if they were very happy there, I'm not sure, but I'm sure they lived a chicken's life, and then it was over, and, you know, I don't think chickens live all that long, if I remember correctly. And, uh... It was sad because Michael really loved Jimbo and I wish we could have taken Jimbo with us, but we didn't know where we were going, where we'd end up. And we did end up in, you know, all of us stuck in a one bedroom mobile home for years. So, um, yeah, it wouldn't have been conducive for chickens or a rooster. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I'll publish this uh, in the morning because it's evening and I'm so tired. My eyes will barely stay open. Ah, so there, I have a story to tell. 18 minutes, that's reasonable. I always worry about how many minutes now. Is this legitimate, you know? Alrighty, oh, that's it. And I am so tired, so I'm going. Night, morning, bye.